I'm Ed Parkinson, VP of Sales for Contact at Once. My presentation, I built this presentation and got inspired about this presentation when I learned about this whole zero moment of truth. It's getting a lot of buzz in auto. And I coupled together some information just about how customers are communicating today and built this presentation. I named it Connecting with Customers in Every Moment of Truth, or stated differently, it's about making the shopper aware through calls to action that you, the people in the dealership, are available to answer their questions right now while they are searching. And to understand the way this works, it's important to understand that there is software available to all of you today that can actually make you present and part of nearly all content that people are searching. In fact, it's a very common technology used today by many, many companies. AutoTrader, Cars.com, Edmunds, every car listed, all use this technology today. And this is an example of it right here. If you watch the screen. So the way the technology works, if someone is visiting a website, you can be present and part of the content by saying, hey, I'm Ed and I'm here. So that's important to understand throughout this presentation. I chose the words very carefully. I chose the word connecting because I believe in the car business, everything is measured in a very linear way. There's some direct relationship between number of phone calls, emails, forms, chats, to the number of ups that show up and the number of people that buy. But when you think about it, the large majority of opportunity is nonlinear. People just show up. Well, where are they? Where have they been? What have they been doing? And we're just beginning to understand this now, today. Through Google, through companies like Datium and Mongoose, companies like that, we're starting to learn where people are and what they are doing. So that's the connecting part. So I think connections are both physical, where you get the customer's information, and I think they're mental. You know, what was it that led that customer to our dealership? What was it that moved them away from our dealership? They're the emotional connections that can be made. The every moment of truth part, I borrowed those words from Jim Lisinski, the author of Zero Moment of Truth. So I'm curious, by a show of hands, who has read that book in this room? Okay, maybe 10%. I strongly encourage all of you, sometime this week, download the book. It's a PDF, it's free. Just go to Google, put in Zero Moment of Truth, Read the book, it'll take an hour, maybe two hours, and you're gonna learn so much about what's happening in our business. So I will touch on that in this presentation. Disruptive innovation. I decided to pull this slide into my presentation to get you thinking. And I found a quote from Gandhi. So Gandhi was a, a leader, a peaceful man who led a revolution. And the quote said, first people will ignore you, then they will laugh or ridicule you, then they will fight you, and then they will win with you. And I think about technology and say, man, that is spot on. And I think about our business, dealerships, and I think it's spot on too. Those same things happen to all of us every day. And if I go back in time to August 10th, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell uttered these famous words. Watson, come here, I want to see you. This was a disruptive innovation that put the death to the Pony Express. And as great as that invention was, I gotta believe back then there were people ignoring it, laughing at it, fighting, at, fighting it, and winning with it. I am certain that somebody back then said, come on, dude, telephone? There's nothing wired, there is no network. How do you plan to get these calls from place to place to place? And I am certain, he said with confidence, we're going to erect poles made of wood that will carry the wires to build the network to place the calls. And I'm sure somebody laughed and said, hey, Bell, where do you expect to get the wood from? And somebody else said, and what good is that telephone if the person on the other side isn't there to answer it? Then what do you got? You got nothing. And then somebody fighting probably said, you know what? I'm going to have to hire somebody to do that because I'm too busy working in my business to have this phone thing ringing the same challenges that we face today. If I fast forward the clock just a little bit to 1903, and the reason I'm here and the reason you're all here, was another disruptive innovation. Henry Ford stated publicly that he would build a motor car for the multitude. 
And in 1908, the first Ford Model T rolled off the production line. 15 years, 15,500,000 cars later, the common man was driving a car. There hasn't been a disruptive innovation in auto, if you think about it, until right about now, and that's the electric car. And then you think about leads, lead flow and lead process. We have legacy structures built in our business. We are fundamentally in the business to capture, chase, and follow up. That's what we do. But everything around us has changed. There's been a major disruption. Why? I think Google has a lot to do with it. The ability to search has totally changed lead flow, and it will continue to change. These little guys, smartphones, totally changing lead flow, disrupting lead flow in our businesses. Chat, disrupting lead flow. Text, disrupting lead flow. These are all changes that are impacting our business. So this little model, I drew this diagram. This is supposed to look like the cable that's holding up the Golden Gate Bridge, a piece of drawn wire. So what I learned is, bless you, drawn wire is steel, and it's drawn into a wire. And a piece of wire itself is strong, but it's not that strong. It can't hold up a bridge. But when you couple those wires together, you get a very strong cable, stronger than a piece of steel, the same diameter. I think about that and all of the opportunity to drive business into our dealership. It takes capital, because each one of these things could cost money in some cases. But the more wires, the more avenues that we have coming into our business, the stronger the opportunity, the bigger the opportunity. But bigger yet is to be present when those customers are coming into our business. If we are present and part of the content, and this is what Google's talking about, we have bigger chances and a better chance to win. I thought you might find this slide interesting. What's interesting about it is in 2009, with smartphones, 18% of people had these things. Today, well, 2011, 44% smartphones. The two days after Christmas, 2010, 700,000 of these were sold. Last year, the same two days, 3.7 million. So do you see where it's going? We used to do this on these phones. Now we do this. Take a look the next time you go to a Starbucks or a hotel lobby. People don't even look up anymore. I mean, our kids, their children are going to be born with six fingers, and they're going to be, they're going to be shaped like this. People don't even look up. And there's one more thing. How many of you have been on an airplane in the last six months to a year, let's say? Good, just about everybody. Imagine right now, I want to put your mind in a place to, to set this presentation in motion. We are all in, in the security lines, and we're weaving through. So we're coming through this way. You have to turn over your driver's license, your boarding pass. They check you out. And then you have to put your stuff on the belt. And if you're like me, it's a big race because you got to be the best and quick, and, and you move quickly. And then you try to look at people and say, OK, I'm going to beat them through because it's a game. And then that's what I do. And, and now they want to scan you. So you get into that machine, and you assume the position. If you travel a lot like me, you just get right in there. You know exactly what you're doing. You're standing there just like this. You have time to make your flight. I travel a lot, so I don't give myself a lot of extra time. I have time. I just don't have extra time. And then I just realized that I have just left my cell phone in the car. And I am standing there like this. And when that boom comes around your face, what does your face look like? This is my face. <laughs> How many of you would get out of line, take the shuttle back to your car, and get your phone? Yeah, like everybody. <laughs> We haven't even missed a call yet, right? It is the fear of being disconnected. You would open the door, you would take your phone, you'd probably hug it. And then you would rebook your flight, pay the extra money, and go through the whole process again. The fear of being disconnected. And I say today, if you're a dealer, you should have a huge fear of being disconnected. I am a connection freakaholic. When I first started with the company I work for, we use this software, this present software. And being present is, is a fundamental thing that we do in our company. 
And when I first took the job five years ago, I had to prove to the people that hired me that I could be successful. I was scared. But I knew if I made enough presentations, and I would be there, like you just saw me pop down on that page a few minutes ago, when somebody would ask me a question, the more I was present, the more opportunity I had to speak to car dealers that were buying the product from me back then. I took my laptop and its wireless card everywhere to the supermarket. When I sat in the stands watching my kids play sports, it sat next to me. I wasn't like Joe Worker. I was just like, I got to be online. When I drove my son, who was 11 at the time, to soccer practice, he sat shotgun with the computer on his lap moving it. Hey, Dad, this person just said hola. I said bonjour. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. So that's what we did. And we still do that today. So being present is really important, important for you in your business. I found these slides. Actually, somebody sent these to me yesterday. I'm like, I'm going to pop them up here. 2012, 46% of consumers own a smartphone. 2013, there will be more browsers open with smartphones than PCs. And by 2015, there'll be one smartphone for every single person on Earth. So you see where it's going? And when people use these things, they don't like to wait. They like to get their information right now. And that's also important to understand. We know, through our partners, Autotrader, Cars.com, we know that if you're present and part of the content and provide every means of communication, phone calls, emails, chats, text. We know if you use them all, you will see a conversion increase on average of at least 25%. We know that. Cars.com did a study in 2009 and said, what happened when somebody asked a question via a text-based message on a detail page of a car? 67% purchased the car somewhere in 30 days or less. So another important piece of data to understand. And the ZMOT. And this is sort of where we're putting a ribbon through the whole thing. ZMOT was made popular by Google. It's been talked about all through the car business. And I'm sure many people are tired of hearing about ZMOT. I put a little different spin on the ZMOT scene. But the way it works for the people that haven't read the book, in order for us to buy anything, there needs to be a stimulus, something that moves us into action. For a car, it could be the last lease payment. Maybe the car's totaled. Maybe it's just old. Maybe you could be just like me, and Greg Wells knows this. I live in Philadelphia, and my daughter goes to the University of Kentucky. It's a 10 and a half hour drive, and, and I'm not doing it anymore, Tony. It is too far. So I bought her a car. That was my stimulus. So in order for us to do something, there's stimulus. What Google talks about is the first moment of truth, the first moment that somebody touches your dealership, the first phone call, the first email, the first chat, the first something. But deals are won and lost in between the stimulus and this first, and this first moment. Then there's a second moment. With a car, maybe they buy the car and they take it home. Now the consumer's mind goes blank. They're not thinking about cars. They're driving it until there's a new stimulus one day down the road. Well, this used to be really important, important to Procter & Gamble. They used to measure the seven seconds at the shelf. What happened when you went to the supermarket? What product did you pull? That was the first moment. The second moment was when you took it home. I think in the old days, moms probably did most of the shopping, brought home the new detergent, said to dad, hey, isn't this stuff great? Doesn't it smell great? Of course, the husband wasn't really listening, and no one ever knew. But today. Google reports that 70% of Americans check reviews before they buy something. So deals are won and lost in reviews. It's another subject matter altogether. But if we don't have good reviews, that's a zero moment that could influence a buying decision. I come to this store, I see 17 reviews, six are bad. I'm like, Ooh, maybe I don't want to go there. I see another store, I see 100 reviews, they're all good or the majority are good, you know, 90%. People are people, you're not going to be perfect. Well, maybe I'll check that place out. So, so things are won and lost in this zero moment. So think about it. When somebody wants something today, what do they do? 
They go on a journey of search and discovery. That's what they do. Google reports that this Zmot, the average customer, is spending 18 to 19 hours online, on average. They're, they say they're looking at 18.2 different points of interest. They report that search gets intense six months out, five months in. They report that it re-energizes at 30 days. We know that truck buyers tend to have a longer shopping pattern than a car buyer. Eric can probably tell you a lot more about all this good stuff because now for the first time companies are starting to watch it and track it. But we're starting to learn this behavior, but how do you win in this moment? And it does take a change. It will take a change for us to win in that moment. There's been a big debate in auto that says, come on, this zero moment stuff's a bunch of baloney. You know, it's not this straight line like you walk into a supermarket, you grab a bag of potato chips and you walk out. It's a car. It's much more complex, and I get that. I don't think it's any one moment that influences us to buy a car. It's a compilation of many moments. I think it only takes one moment to screw it all up, though. But buying a car is more like being on a meandering path, a, me a meandering path up and down the side of a steep mountain with dangerous curves that a customer can fall off or be disconnected from your dealership. And every time there's a curve, well, the curve is created by the customer with questions. And those questions are hard. Will you give me enough for my trade? Will you negotiate the price? These are really hard questions that need to get answered by customers. Why not use all the resources available today? Email, text, chat, call. Why not use them all to deal with consumers? Why just use some? And I believe because of smartphone, because of speed, it's important for us to use every communication tool so that we can deal with the customer on their terms. Google. I've been around the country, and I've watched Google present multiple times in the last year. They talk about the four Bs, to be engaged, to be relevant, to be found, to be metric driven. Found, engaged, relevant, metric driven. But what Google hasn't really talked much about is to be present, present and part of the content. Has anyone read a book called Search by John Battelle by any chance? It's kind of old at this point. It's pretty interesting, but I'll quote from it. He, he wrote, what does the world want? Build a company that answers this question in all its shades of meaning and you've unlocked the most intractable riddle of marketing, of business, and arguably of human culture itself. And over the past 13 and a half years, I added that sentence, Google has done just that. They have built the database of customer intentions. But what Google has really built is an impatient society. I get pissed off waiting at red lights. How many of you hate to wait? How many of you would get frustrated if you were looking for something and it wasn't there on Google? Think about the Gen Yers that are coming up. Now, Nielsen's reporting Gen C, the connected generation, 18 to 34-year-olds, the most connected generation on Earth. They have grown up with the world at their fingertips, every question answered at the blink of an eye. They will never march down the driveway like I do on the weekends to pick up my newspaper. I cut out the week, but I got to do the weekend. If your business isn't online, they won't find you. If your business isn't transparent and they can see through and see in, they won't trust you. If you try to get their information before you have a right to ask for it, they won't like you and they won't be back. When they played Little League, everybody on the team got a trophy. How many of the older people here got a trophy just for being on Little League? I didn't. I'm a former soccer player and I played competitively till I was 35. And I started a thing in my community that we would give a trophy out to the most skilled player in each age group. So I ran it the first year. I had this whole judging system. And I gave one kick, kick butt trophy to each kid in the age group. I got crucified. I was tortured. So the next year, everybody got a little trophy. But I remember the first year I did it, I gave a trophy to Connor Ryan. I said, Connor, I said to his dad, I'm like, man, he is so good. He's going to be great. He's a national player. He's the only kid from our community that ever became a national player. But now they all get the little trophies. But it's different. 
It's different today than it used to be. Ask yourself this question. Everything that I do, online, in the newspaper, in my emails that I respond to customers, does every single one of those things answer every question humanly imaginable? What do you think? No way. But customers have questions. That's why they're searching. So how do we interact with that customer right now, right here, rather than disconnecting them and following up later? I mean, we live with email. If you think about it, there's a fundamental flaw with email. It's been broken since the day it was invented. It is the most broken thing on a website. Why? Because you're taking a person that's on your site right now, you're moving them to a form and you're disconnecting them. You're kicking them out the door to follow up with them later. With these bad boys in pockets and the way people want information, that doesn't work. Not effectively anyway. So it's changed. So how do we become part of all content that people are searching? How do we answer the questions right now? That's your challenge, and it is a challenge, but it's also a huge opportunity for everyone in the room. The shopping path. I'll just summarize the shopping path for time's sake, that it doesn't begin and end at the dealership. That we know. That's for sure. But, but one thing I do know about the shopping path is the people on it are all like me and you. They're people. And fundamentally, we're all very much alike. And what people want, they want to transition from the information they've learned about to a real person. It's really important in the car buying process because most people, almost all, still buy at the dealership. And if you think about it, there's one thing missing from every website, every car dealership website in America that's almost on every other website. Does anybody know what that is? Yes. There's no shopping cart. So that generates the questions. But think about it. People buying cars don't know that. They're like, whoa, there's no shopping cart. This sucks. I mean, that's, I mean, they go to Amazon, there's shopping carts, there's shopping carts everywhere, but there's no shopping carts, they don't know that. So, we need to deal with those customers and their questions. I believe this, I believe when people contact you, this is what they really wanna say. Hey, I'm gonna come in tomorrow and buy a car. Um, you gonna screw me over? Um, is there a sale starting tomorrow that I won't know about until after I buy my car? Was there anybody that bought this exact car like in the last month or two that paid less than I did? That's what people want to know. They want to ask us that. But they don't because they're just nice people. But that's what they want. So what they do, they ask us other questions like, is the price negotiable? Do you have the car in stock? Does it have this? Does it have that? The does it have questions? But you can count on it. If it's not their conscious mind, their subconscious mind is learning about you all along the way, whether it's a chat or it's a phone call or it's anything. It's learning about you. It's saying, do I like you? Do I trust you? Will you help me? Give me a reason to come in and buy from you. They're all the things that the person's mind is fishing for in all of our conversations. So how, how do we use that information? How do we deal with those customers? So it's really important for us, the people at the business, to be dealing with these customers as quickly as possible. This is an actual diagram. I thought this would interest you, but this here is an actual customer of, of ours. But I just wanted to highlight that in this diagram, and it might be hard for people to see in the back, in one week's time, they had 97, this happens to be chats, FYI, but 97 from their website, 27 from Craigslist, 23 from Cars, 22 from Trader, four from Facebook, 10 from every car listed, and six from the online credit application. So all this is, this is an illustration of somebody that's really taking the approach that, you know what, I'm going to be present and part of as much content as I can to create more phone calls. This is just one piece of it. I don't have the ability to measure the other pieces. But this is just one piece of somebody saying, you know what, I'm going to be present and answer questions everywhere. What we also know about being present, and this is information that we pull from our database for sites that we host, that with presence, when you're there and part of the content, sitting on that auto trader page, does anybody have any idea how powerful it is to have your face there with so many impressions? Forget about the people that chat, who cares? Just being there, having your face there is like unbelievable. So we know that if you're there, your phone calls go up. 
They just go up, which is kind of cool. We're starting to see trends now for the first time. A year ago, we would say that with confidence, they're going up. Today, we're starting to see trends where calls are not going up. We know connections are going up all over the place, but calls are going down probably because of these little guys, you know, the greater ability to communicate without making a call. This slide I want to put up to highlight speed, but I just wanted to highlight how many chat users there are, but I also want to tell a story. I sent my daughter, who was a junior at uh, East Carolina, this is several years ago, to England between Christmas and New Year's to meet some friends. She went with another girl. I gave her all the advice a dad could give. Brittany, nothing good happens after midnight and do not get separated from your friends. Yes, dad. You got that, Brittany? Yes, dad. First day there, first night, out of a bar after midnight, lets the friends get about a block away so she can walk with this boy who she liked and they get mugged. Not only do they get mugged, they get the crap kicked out of them. So imagine it being a parent, you're sound asleep, and my daughter's face looked like a balloon. She had been kicked in the face, it was terrible. But you have the London police on the phone. Sir, we have your daughter in custody, she needs medical attention, what do you want to do? You're, you're, it's, it's, you're, you're, you just got woken up. You're freaking out, there's nothing you can do. Nothing, you're an ocean away. There's nothing you can do. I went down into the basement. My other daughter, two years younger, who's in Costa Rica backpacking right now. <clears throat> Not the sharpest tool in the shed, am I? <laughs> backpacking, um, so I went to the basement. My other daughter, two years younger, is having a sleepover with three girls. I walked down and I just told them what happened to Brittany. And as tears rolled down their faces, they're looking at me like this. Kids don't even have to look at their fingers. <laughs> Right, They're like this. We got a phone call about four hours later from a family in our community vacationing in France. The father had already spoke to my daughter on Skype. He boarded a train heading to London to help her get home. That's unbelievable. I was back in bed sleeping when that went down. Those kids from the basement just started a network. You know, Facebook, I mean, it just, it just went. They were able to connect, they got her on Skype. It's amazing how that happened, just the connections. And I think about our business, the speed at which we communicate determines how quickly we can make money. And if we can answer every customer question every time, we have a competitive advantage. And if we can't, we're at a competitive disadvantage. We are a highly connected operation within our company. We use it for everything. Like we connect under the table and this on phone calls. We have little you know, side chats going. But think about it in your business. If sales screws up, service is gonna pay for it one day. If service screws up, sales is gonna pay for it one day. So why not be connected? Let everybody see everything that's going on. Just in the last couple of weeks, Bridget takes a chat. She lives in North Carolina. First question, hey, it's a, it's a customer of ours. I'd like to speak with Lloyd. Lloyd sees the chat come in, in our, in, in our world, picks up the phone, calls the dealer. Why Bridget's trying to get information. A chat comes in, I see the IP address. It's Van Tile in Dallas. I'm like, ooh, it's Van Tile in Dallas. So I ping Brad in Dallas. Yo, Brad, Kimberly in Pittsburgh's on a chat with Van Tile. In the meantime, it's one of our customers who asked the question. Kimberly forwards it to service. Charles and service is bringing resolution while I'm behind the scenes, you know, directing traffic. That's being connected. And that's how connected we should be. I mean, we should be connected. Remember that, you know? That's the jaw-dropping part of my presentation if you read the bio. <laughs> Faces. How are we doing on time? Faces, you know, faces fire spindle neurons. They make an emotional connection that wasn't there a moment ago. And what I'd like to do is play this short video. I just found this. You can tell a lot about a person by their face. But better yet, you can increase your conversion with a person's face. That's this week on Think Tank Tuesday. Hi, this is Paul Potratz, and welcome to this week's Think Tank Tuesday. So the question is, do you have a face in your advertising? Do you have as far as a branding strategy where you're using people in your advertising? If not, 
I encourage you to think a little differently. Dealers across the country are saying, I don't want to use my salespeople. I don't want to use people in my dealership. They've got a face for radio. I don't want to use them in my advertising. I'm afraid they're going to get recruited by somebody else, or I'm afraid that they're going to leave and then they're still going to be in my advertising. Well, stop worrying because as far as the payoff is much higher. We did a study a few years ago and we found out by using real people in our advertising, we can increase the conversion. We could also increase the closing rate. We could also increase the gross dollars. It's true. You can really do it if you just think back as far as the old cliche strategy. People buy from people or people buy from people that they feel like they know. So you can really create as far as a branding strategy by using people in your advertising, then when somebody comes to the dealership, they already feel like they know the individual. I mean, those of you out there that watch the Think Tank Tuesday every week, and then I meet you in the trade shows, you feel like that you already know me. It's easier to communicate with me. So let's assume for a moment you've got 200 employees at your dealership, and the average person knows 300 people. That's a whole lot of first name people as far as first name basis that these individuals are connected to. So by using them in your advertising is going to help your reach. It's going to separate your advertising. And again, I'm not talking about those boring headshots. Do something fun with it. Even in your display advertising, use a person's face. And we found out that by using a real person in the display ads could create as high as a 23% higher click through rate. What about the chat on your website? Using a real person on the chat of your website makes a person feel comfortable. So go back to the old cliche. People like to buy from people. So by using real people in your advertising, that's working your network. And before you know it, you're going to see as far as your closing ratio goes up and your gross goes up. I encourage you to try it. And I guarantee you the payoff is going to be more than you ever thought it would. That's this week's tip. Be sure and tune in next week. Faces. Was at a trade show and a presenter talked and said, you should never put your face on a website. And one of my customers came flying across the room and said, Eddie's crazy. I deliver one to three cars every single month to people that I never met. They come in and ask for me. Well, if people are spending 18 to 19 hours in Zmot looking at 18.2 things, Cars.com and Autotrader drive massive impressions to websites. If your face is in front of those people every time, everywhere, I mean, what's the chance of just one person walking in saying, you know, hey, you know, I'll ask for you. I presented, I was at New Holland Ford Toyota on a Saturday morning, and one of the sales guys raised his hand in front of his peers and said, I sold Mr. So-and-so last Thursday. Walked in, asked for me, and act like he knew me. I was embarrassed. I didn't know who he was. I was trying to think, how did I not remember this person? Did I fail to log in up? I, I had to come clean. So I said, sir, I don't remember who you are. And the customer said, oh, I didn't expect that you would. But I saw your face a couple times. You look like a friendly guy. I just figured I would come in and ask for you. I mean, that can really happen. So have the face, much face time in Zima as possible is really important. Mobile. Touched on mobile earlier. I just learned for the first time, I didn't know this myself, but one of my customers called me and said, Ed, I was on my iPhone, the 4S. I actually talked into it, and it transcribed to text in a chat. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Thanks. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have knew that. That is so cool. But mobile, the same store that I was at, New Holland Ford, that Saturday morning, I presented from 8 to 9. I stayed in the showroom to help them get more people online, to get more users using our tool, to get people mobile, get them on their mobile apps. I kid you not, there was this one guy that leaned against the car for an hour. He's just like this, like for an hour, just looking out the window. It was an hour. Kept looking at my watch or my phone. And I finally walked up, and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? He said, I have the best view of the lot from right here, right here out this window. So when I got home, I was curious. I went right to my computer, and I said, how many unique visitors were at that dealership while I was there? There were 132 people that were at the dealership while I was there. For one hour, he looked out that window. That did not include three other sources that he's in Zeman, which was Auto Trader, Cars, and every car listed. So I have no idea what the impressions were there. If he had his mobile device on, by one click of a, his device, his face could have lit up. He could have been part of all content that people were searching. What's the chance of one person walking through the door and saying, 
hey, I'd like to speak to so-and-so. That's the power you know, behind these devices and things they can do for us. New kids on the block need to pay attention because they're coming. Not sure of consumer adoption, but certainly QR codes, right, which are designed to take people places. I found one on a Nissan car on the window sticker. And when you took it, it took you to a web page. So this is other areas where people are present. With text-based communication on the way, now for the first time in theory, you can be present and, all, and part of content where people are searching offline. Because you could have a long code, you know, long text number code, or you could have a QR code sitting in a print ad, and a customer could click it or decide to text you right there, right then. So you have the ability in real time to create communication points from these advancements in technology. This is just an illustration of presence awareness. It's a heat map, normalized over 24 hours. But you can see people, and Carl, you may know this too from watching websites, that um, people are searching and spending a lot of time on websites in the middle of the day. So with communication, they, typically people work in cube farms. They can't pick up the phone and call, but they're looking for their next car. Maybe they can't send email. They could dis discreetly chat, perhaps, right in the middle of the day. The other thing we know is Saturday mornings. We see traffic increase early in the morning. Just like that fellow leaning against the car that day, people are validating their search. One final checkpoint before they march into the dealership. So it's important for us to take this information and mirror it. How do we stay online? How do we become active in the content when people are searching? It's very important. Optimizing for presence. Involve the whole team. We, we were a company that introduced chat software to, to car dealers and Sometimes the product just gets stuck in the internet office, and sometimes that's okay. But I say now, why not open it up to everybody? Not only our product, why not open everything up? If there's a ringing phone and a receptionist can't get it, man, if there's some manager sitting there, why not pick up the phone? What's the big deal? Hello, how can I help you? I, got a sales per I need a salesperson, page the floor, somebody picks it up. What's the big deal? Why can't we do that? Why can't we? Even with chats in my little world, why not turn the receptionist? The receptionists are the best multitaskers on earth. Why not let them answer a chat and page the floor? Hey, I got a customer I got to forward this to. Why miss these people? Why miss them? We should never miss anybody. Get mobile. Use a supporting cast. You know, in my business, chat, we have obviously many competitors. Almost all of the companies have the ability to outsource. Use a supporting cast to help answer when you can't and this one. In these presentations that I do, I'm always trying to learn and find new information. So I went back and just watched the ZMOT videos again, and then I got an aha moment. But who has the responsibility to manage presence? Well, Google's talking about in your business, who has the responsibility to manage ZMOT? Because it is so important to win in ZMOT, which would include your reviews and all those things. Who has the responsibility in the dealership today to manage presence? And I truly believe, and it may not happen this year or next year, there will be somebody in dealerships measuring presence. We have that now. There are dealers that manage being online because they know if they're online, they get more leads. That's a reality. And coming to a close, I pulled this slide. At driving sales last year, Zappos gave one of the keynotes. And I sat in the audience that day, and I took some notes. And Zappos, um, in addition, to its online shopping cart, apparently is just a great place to work. And forget the numbers. Anybody know it? They offer $3,000 to every employee to quit. Yeah, when you come out of the training, three grand to quit. And uh, you know, try that at your dealership and see how many people take the money. <laughs> but that's what they do. And, but Zappos, they inspire happiness and engagement. Think about that happiness and engagement on every single contact, to be available at every touch point, that's ZMOT. 
How do I become available and part of all content that people are searching to be available? To make personal emotional connections. Be personally emotion connected. That's that stuff I was talking about when people are asking you questions. The personal uncertainties, do I like you, do I trust you? That's it there. Have interactions, not transactions. And I got news for you. Whether you're on a, a phone call or an email and you disconnect that person, you know, in case we get disconnected, you can have your name, sir. Uh, you're on a chat. Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that question, but let me have my manager call you back. That is a transaction. And people don't like that. That's not what they want. People want to get all the information and all the answers. That's what they want. This is my final slide. Are you present and connecting? Believe it or not, today, through publisher websites such as Cars and Auto Trader and Edmonds, about 15, well, 12,000 viewers, let's say, are in the game. On dealership websites with these new connection points of instant messaging, about 18, 19% are actually using tools today. It's where the customers are. So there's huge opportunity. And to be fully connected, back to my drawn wire illustration, every thread coming into the business, less than 5% of all dealers in America are truly connected everywhere customers are shopping. And I'll leave you with this. So how do you, how do you go back to your store and put processes in place to be online, to become part of the content that people are searching? That's your challenge and that's your opportunity. Thank you very much.